So now we go to the gathering and greeting. God has gone up with a shout. The Lord with the sound of a trumpet. The Lord be with you. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. So the introduction to today's service. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, for 40 days we have been celebrating with joyful hearts the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, his bursting from the tomb and his defeat of the power of sin and death. He appeared to his disciples many times and told them about the kingdom of God. Today, we recall how he left this earth and returned to his father, ascending into, the, into heaven to take his throne over all dominions and powers, trusting in his reign over all creation and submitting to his kingly yet loving rule. Let us hear the story of his parting. A reading from the Acts of Apostles, Acts 1, verses 4 to 11. In the first book, Theodophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptised with water, but you will be baptised with the Holy Spirit, not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or the periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has cut upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, they were gazing up towards heaven. Suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up towards heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Alleluia! Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia! Seeing we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us offer him the praise worthy of his name. We say together, glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray that our risen and ascended Lord will lead us to eternal life. Risen Christ, you have raised our human nature to the throne of heaven. Help us to seek and serve you, that we may join you at the Father's side, where you reign with the, Holy, with the Spirit in glory, now and forever. Amen.
A reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love towards all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body the fullness of him who fills all in all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, God. to God. And so now singing it through twice, Abba Father, let me be. Alleluia, alleluia. Go and make disciples of all nations, says the Lord. Remember, I am with you always, to the end of the age. Alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Saint Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and he said to them, thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. 
you are witnesses of these things. And see, I am sending upon you what my father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple blessing God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I confess that I am always very flattered and terrified when um, Paul asks me to preach. Um, flattered because there's nothing more wonderful than being able to tell people about the Bible. And terrified, well, not for speaking in front of people, that actually doesn't bother me at all. But it's that responsibility that goes with interpreting God's word. So what is so reassuring is that it's not really me, but the Holy Spirit. I hope and pray that you hear God's voice speaking to you now. Can I also mention, it is very strange preaching when there are experts like Paul and Claire listening in. It's kind of like teaching a lesson with the head teacher sitting at the back of the class. And no, I promise you, I do not want a mark out of 10. So where to start? I thought I would begin my research by looking up in a dictionary about what it said about Ascension Day. And the answer was, Paul, thank you. The Thursday, but one before Whitsuntide. Well, that was helpful, wasn't it? And I'm a Christian, but in fairness, it did go on. And it did go on to say, it is to commemorate Christ's Ascension into heaven, which is of course a lot more helpful, providing of course, you know that the word Ascension means to rise. Being training as a reader is absolutely fantastic. I am learning so much. You all probably know this, but I confess, it was not until I completed the unit on the New Testament that I fully appreciated that the book of Acts is the sequel to the gospel according to Luke. You need to remove the gospel according to John and read Luke and Acts together. Acts is the continuation of Jesus' story. In Acts, Luke continues to tell the story as the apostles and disciples live into the next generation. The story doesn't end with the death and resurrection of Jesus. It continues in the lives of those who believe in him. It continues through us. Think of it like the line of succession. The monarchy in Britain will not end when Queen Elizabeth II dies. It will continue with King Charles III and then King William V and so on and so on. And so the story of Jesus does not end. It passes on to the next generation. The book of Acts starts by recapping um, Jesus's death and resurrection. At school, we call this interleaving. When you keep returning to key themes in order to help students remember them and to reinforce how central these key messages are. It's almost like Luke saying, you may have paused, but before we get going again, just remind yourself what has happened. As Christians, we need to keep the central message of Jesus' death and resurrection close to our hearts, certain that our sins are forgiven. The verses I read to you today in Acts 1 are a bridge between the events in the gospel and the beginning of the church. Jesus spent 40 days teaching his disciples and like all good teaching, this had a profound effect upon them. They were drastically changed. Before the resurrection, they had argued with each other and had deserted their Lord. Remember how Peter denied Jesus three times. The time with the risen Lord must have been very special. It was a time when many of the disciples' questions were answered. They became convinced of the resurrection. They learned about the kingdom of God. They discovered the power of the Holy Spirit. 
Those 40 days must have been so, so special. The joy of having the risen Lord amongst them, their dear friend back from the dead. Finally, the chance to understand more about the kingdom of God and the opportunity to ask him questions. I am sure the apostles knew that Jesus would have to lead them at some point, but I am sure they did not know exactly when or how this would happen. I wonder if they felt like we do now. We do not know when lockdown will fully end, when our lives will go back to normal, but we do know this day will come. The apostles were granted the gift of time to be with the risen Lord. Jesus used the time he had with them to equip them for the journey they were about to take. Luke makes it clear that these Christians he wrote about were no more spectators of Jesus than Jesus was a spectator of God. They are in on the action of God, God acting in them, God living in them, which means that we are in on the action of God too. God can act in us. God can live in us if we let him. Let us use this gift of time we have been given to equip ourselves for the journey God wants us to travel on. Today's passage obviously focuses on Jesus being taken up into heaven, the ultimate destination of all Christians. Let's hear the verse again. While they were watching, he was lifted up and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going and they were gazing up towards heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up towards heaven? I am not surprised that the apostles stood there transfixed, gazing up into the sky. I am sure I would have done exactly the same. But the men in white robes reminded them for though their heads might be in the clouds, their feet were still on the ground. The apostles had been given a mission. You will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Following Christ is a call to action, not just contemplation. I don't know what your first instinct is when you hear good news. Joy, celebration, of course. But then if you are like me, you have a burning desire to pass it on, to share that joy with others, even if it means nothing to them. So and so are going to have a baby. Have you heard X and Y are getting married? We want others to be part of the celebration, which is why we have parties and receptions. It should be the same with the good news of the gospel. We should be wanting to share the message of Jesus, just like we share the other good things that happen in life. The baton has been passed to us. Our mission as Christians is to share the good news. The even better news is that this challenge also comes with a promise. We are not alone. God will equip us with the Holy Spirit. Jesus needed to ascend into heaven. If he had stayed on earth, his physical presence would have limited the spread of the good news because physically he could only be in one place at a time. After Christ was taken up to heaven, he would be spiritually, spiritually present everywhere through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was sent so that God could be with his followers after Christ returned to heaven. We have the gift of the Holy Spirit. Let us use this gift to pass the message on. Jesus is in heaven. We are on earth. It is down to us to continue this story. So part of our way to continue the story is profession of our faith in God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. I now invite you to join with me in saying the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, 
through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. So now we turn to the time of prayer for our intercessions for today. Let us join our prayers with those of our Saviour Christ, seeking the Father's blessing and the gifts of the Spirit. Jesus Christ, great High Priest, living forever to intercede for us. Pray for the Church, your broken body in the world. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Jesus Christ, King of righteousness, enthroned at the right hand of the majesty on high, pray for the world and make it subject to your gentle rule. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Jesus Christ, Son of Man, drawing humanity into the life of God, pray for your brothers and sisters in need, distress or sorrow. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Jesus Christ, pioneer of our salvation, bringing us to glory through your death and resurrection, surround with your saints and angels, those who have died trusting your promises. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Jesus Christ, Lord over all things, ascended far above the heavens and filling the universe. Pray for us who receive the gifts you give us for work in your service. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Jesus Christ. Keep the church in the unity of the spirit and in the bond of peace and bring the whole created order to worship at your feet. For you are alive and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. You'll find I have unmuted you, but be quiet for a moment. The peace. Jesus says, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. If you love me, rejoice, because I am going to the Father. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also, and also with you. We are going to, we've said it, so hopefully you've heard it from each other, but now let us share a sign of the peace. So, peace yeah. with you. Peace.
And I'm going to meet you all again now. And now let us pray together, looking for the coming of his kingdom. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And apologies for anyone who has just joined us at the half past seven. Uh, we're just coming to the end of the service. If you'd like to watch the whole service through again, it will be on YouTube uh, a little bit later on this evening. Now we come to the blessing. God the Father, who has given to his Son the name above every name, strengthen you to proclaim Christ Jesus as Lord. Amen. God the Son, who is our great High Priest, passed into the heavens, plead for you at the right hand of the Father. Amen. God the Holy Spirit, who pours out his abundant gifts upon the church, make you faithful servants of Christ our King. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. And just before Elizabeth plays, if you can buy her a second, uh, we've finished, moved the service earlier so that you can go out at eight o'clock if you wanted to, to show your appreciation to all the health workers and everyone who's looking after us. And just to show you, uh, make a big noise with big instruments. So that's what I'm doing at eight o'clock. <laughs> So we're now going to sing our concluding hymn of the service, Angel Voices Ever Singing.
Well, thank you very much for joining us this evening. I hope that you're able to go out and show your appreciation to all those who are risking their lives to look after us and the health services and caring professionals. This brings our service here this evening on this Ascension Day to its end. Uh, may God go with you. And Elizabeth, play on for us. I'll let you all go on. Thank you very much. God bless you all. Thank you. Good night. Good night to everybody. Good night. You can't hear each other now. <laughs> no, don't stick don't, that's it. Yeah, don't forget, join us again on Sunday. Boss. Awesome.